Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I described the Ariane 7 rocket as I called it. Uh, apparently uh, it might be called the Themis rocket though that is also the name of a satellite but I'm gonna stick to Ariane 7 because the rocket configuration is seven Prometheus engines at the bottom uh, replacing the Vulcan engine at the bottom of what is basically an Ariane 6 tank in this case and the tank instead reconfigured to methane and oxygen instead of hydrogen and oxygen and since there's seven engines these are engines that uh, ESA is planning to develop and uh, I decided that Ariane 7 would be fitting it's sort of like uh, the Falcon 9 sort of naming sense if you will uh, so in that video people suggested that I put the vacuum variant of the Prometheus engine on the top stage instead of the Vinci engine. We currently have the regular upper stage of the Ariane 6 rocket, the Vinci engine, here, and it is fairly underpowered. Thrust to weight ratio of 0.36 in vacuum at the start, causing all sorts of problems for reaching low Earth orbit. It's fine for reaching, you know, high orbits, you know, going to the moon or going to geosynchronous, but not very good for low Earth orbit capacity. So replacing this with the Prometheus vacuum engine is a possibility. So I made a model of the Prometheus vacuum engine. What I wanted to do was to make a retractable nozzle like we have with the Vinci engine. So if you haven't seen the Vinci engine, this allows for a much larger nozzle. You can see it's a huge nozzle, much higher uh, nozzle ratio. Uh, but I couldn't do the retractable nozzle thing on the Prometheus engine because it's got this ball in the way and it's got all sorts of tubing which if you can see the tubing here is such that if you try and retract this nozzle, well you could probably retract it a little bit but uh, if you try to retract a bigger nozzle you're gonna have a bit of a problem. So I made a lot, uh, nozzle as large as I thought I could while still fitting inside uh, this area on this stage uh, we have to actually scooch this up because this stage was meant to sit on the bottom node of the Vinci engine so that has changed a bit uh, speaking of which uh, so people pointed out that they wanted the updated texture for the Ariane 6 of course and I'll work on that along with other fixes uh, like changing, uh, developing a methane oxygen tank. Of course, this doesn't look like a methane oxygen tank right now. So there's that to do. And there's also the node thing that will need to be fixed if I want to make an Ariane 7 as well, or Themis or whatever. So yeah, all that has to be taken into consideration. What you don't uh, perhaps appreciate about this tank is it's not one texture. It's actually a bunch of textures because of the way Substance Painter works. I broke this up into different meshes so that Substance Painter could seamlessly place the textures and the white areas are one texture and one set of mesh and then the sort of gold bands are another mesh and another set another texture and then the metallic sections are a different mesh and a different texture so it's a bit complicated okay so that is why I haven't done it yet all right, so yeah, we've got the engine on, but this is still a hydrogen oxygen tank, so it's not doing the right things. So let's uh, show tank UI, remove the hydrogen and oxygen, and fill the same volume with methane and oxygen instead. Now, of course, the tank configuration is not the same, um, but we're filling up the same volume. And we could probably do better with a somewhat larger volume if you take a look at it. We've got 1.2 thrust to weight ratio, which is we, we can do with a lower thrust to weight ratio and we'll be fine. So yeah, we could do with bit bigger tanks. Currently the engine, the Prometheus vacuum engine, I've set it to a 368 in vacuum for the ISP, for the efficiency. Uh, so... I figured that that was a fair amount for the nozzle ratio that we have. Could be less. Um, can't really see it could be more, to be honest. And the thrust is a little bit higher than for the sea level engines. Okay, uh, so we got 16 tons on here. Uh, maybe we can go with more. 
and that's our goal with this. I mean, there's no real good point to changing from a Vinci engine to one of these uh, Prometheus vacuum engines if we can't get more payload. Now, it might be that we want to increase the size of this tank, and we'll do a test with that as well. I'll just put a supplementary tank on top here. But first, let's see what it can do without that, and then we'll see what it can do with that. And then another thing we need to think about is recoverability. And so if we just do the grid fins and the landing legs on the first stage, what can what can we carry preserving enough fuel to land on a barge, for instance? I don't know if they got to do the barge version or the return to launch site version. That's a whole thing. We've got a fairly robust thrust weight ratio. Uh, so normally I'd estimate 9,500 meters per second. But given our thrust weight ratio, let's see if we can uh, do 18 tons. So two tons more than the other version. Okay, we are in Kuru, so that's nominal. Just taking a look. Uh, there's something weird going on down here. There's a gap there. <laughs> I don't understand sometimes. Uh, Kerbal. Okay, that shouldn't have a gap at all. Maybe it's the launch clamps doing something weird. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Oh, I say yes. Well, now there's no gap. I think it was the launch clamps doing something. Well, obviously we have fully robust thrust weight ratio this time, so we need to turn fairly quickly. We're well past the speed of sound. Yeah, one other thing about redoing the textures or creating alternate textures is I'm not thrilled with the idea of requiring like fire spitter for the texture component to it or some other plugin that allows for a texture switcher but maybe it's necessary but so far I haven't required such a thing for the mods though it does open possibilities with the heavier upper stage because we're using methane and oxygen it does mean that there's less impetus to lengthen the core stage. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, well that worked well. It could have worked done badly. The collider on this could have been accidentally clipping the bottom, uh, the, the, the top of the first stage. Okay, fairing set. Okay, and shut down. 255 by 171 with a healthy margin left. Uh, we could assume that, you know, maybe they'd want it in a 300 by 300 orbit or something. So probably don't want to cut it too much closer than this. So, and we also didn't put a payload adapter on there. So 18 tons seems okay. It's not too much more than that. Now, what if we put some more fuel on and then see what happens? Uh, let's see if we can optimize that. It's tough to say, right? Every more you, every bit more that you put on this stage, you're taking out of the thrust weight ratio of the first stage. But we could probably put quite a bit more, actually. Let's see. Okay, so I've added a 30-ton tank here, which is obviously quite an increase to the 74 tons that we already had. And we've got a payload adapter weighing at 0.9 tons, and then we have a 20 ton payload. So that's what we're going to try to do, but it's tough. 9,274 there right now, and we haven't put the bearings on yet. So putting these on. There we go. So yeah, that's quite a bit less. We'll see if it works. It's probably pushing it. So 20 tons, though, is what we're trying for. Okay, I didn't really change anything about the upper stage, but I decided to produce that gap again. Well, uh, we'll fix that in the configurations later. That's probably not going to ruin the test. Let's see. Ignition. And launch. 
watch. Uh, okay. Um, hopefully SAS can figure that out. Okay, that's a little bit weird. Just make sure we're controlling from here. Well, the awkward liftoff has left us with some sideways component that's pretty persistent. But otherwise, we are proceeding. And throttling back up and separation and ignition. Oops. Me a little bit of skew. Okay. Yeah, of course, we separated at a lower point in the atmosphere because this is now a lot heavier. So we'll wait until 100 kilometers to separate the fairings. Uh, I can turn on RCS to stop that roll potentially. And fairings. Now this does have to keep up some extra pitch compared to last time. Okay, and shut down. 222 by 205 with 51 meters per second left, so 20 ton payload seems to be about right for adding this much extra fuel. So, yep, and I don't think I want to add anything more. This seems to be as good as I wanted. So, yep, if we lengthen the stage a bit, and then we can get 20 tons to low Earth orbit, which is pretty good, you know, considering the size of the rocket. Now, what happens if we put landing legs, grid fins, and we save some fuel for a potential return to launch site? How much can we get to orbit? Okay, so I've put the landing legs and grid fins on. I put the grid fins as high as I could on the inner stage without interfering with the six, basically. And so let me show you what I'll do to estimate this. Now we got 9,200 meters per second like this, and this was able to carry this load up to orbit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to save 10% of the burn time for return to launch site or whatever recovery. So that's 10% right there, right? Uh, 15 seconds, basically. Okay, and then that reduces our mass by how much? So 474 reducing by 10% is 30, 30 tons, 31 tons. So... I'm going to go ahead and we're going to temporarily copy these numbers. We could do this another way, but actually, uh, let me do it the other way. Um, forget that. All right. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to strap on an additional tank with that 31 tons because we're going to save it. It's going to come out of our Delta V, saving that fuel, right? It's not just that we're under fueling it that mass is still there so we have to add that mass somehow so av gas strap to the side and we want 31 tons of it to weigh this down and affect our delta v figure okay well it's close enough and we need 9,200 meters per second, it was, with that one fairing on. So, um, we will reduce the size of this payload. And that's 9,210. So, it's a 15 ton payload, it looks like. So, okay. So, we're going to say that if we reserve 10% of our fuel down here, we're going to be able to carry a 15 ton payload up there. So that's what we're going to go for. And let's see if that happens. I'll save the fuel, but again, I'm not going to do the landing bit. We're just trying to check how much payload capacity can get to orbit. So that's our goal. Landing is a different kind of thing. That's a test of my piloting skills more than a test of numbers. Oh, so we'd have to put some sort of RCS system on, which we haven't done, though that's easy enough. I've got my own methane oxygen RCS ports. We could just slap those conformal uh, ED2 conformal RCS ports onto the stage and they'll work just fine. Okay, um, the gap has shifted down to the bottom again this time, but 
that seemed more stable on the first launch. I don't understand this whole it producing random gaps thing, but ignition. And launch. And only when the launch clamps are on. Now I am going a little bit steeper because we are reserving the fuel and this would have to get back to the launch site so it will go steeper. So at 15 seconds left I'll shut it down and stage. Throttling down. Okay and shut down. Separation and ignition. Okay, that was clean. And fairing separation. I think we might fall just a little bit short. Mm, yep, just a little bit short. Uh, probably maybe a hundred meters per second more would have done it. Let's see what that gets us in the VAB. Let's call it 200 for margin. So right now it's 9849. Nine. That's about 200 more, close enough for me. So 13.6 tons is what we're looking at for the payload capacity reusable style in theory. Of course, uh, we can go on and test whether with 10% of the fuel I can land the sucker. But that's for another day at this point. Uh, for now, maybe I, I should do like just one video where I try and land everything. I don't know. I've got a lot of these piled up is all I'm saying. But yeah, all right. So those are the results. And I think I've plumbed out uh, most. Oh, yes, there's the heavy configuration. That That's also another thing. I have to adjust where the tank attaches, I think. Let me see if that's the case. Yeah, you see how it's attaching right now? Um, uh, yeah, I think I need to change that. So for a heavy configuration, we need to fix that up a bit. But for now, I'll leave it here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.